Market cap is plus 0.7% since last Monday. And the BTC is minus 0.63%. So this means not a lot of new money coming into this market. Okay. But instead, you know, money from the BTC to the going to the altcoin right now. That is why you know, dominance lays in a little. The things we have to very carefully pay attention to here because you know once too much money goes to the altcoin, BTC plus is crashed, then altcoin markets also crash. That's typically what happens. Mr. Masa. So today is a regular item, Bitcoin, Aircoin, Weekly Analysis and Market Forecast, June 29th to July 5th. Okay, so let's start. So as usual, this is my portable strategy. So I only allocate my assets to the Bitcoin and all the Aircoin which is related to these six categories. So if you want to deeper understand my portable strategy, please check out my other video about my portable strategy stuff. Okay. And then my portfolio allocation status as of now, update here. So I newly added a new item here, compounds token comp for my portfolio, okay? And then let's start on the Bitcoin, BTC. So as usual, this is a BTC USDT hourly chart, seven days versions. Actually two weeks ago, they're gonna hit like 19.780. This is the highest you know, price in two weeks ago. And then this week, Right after that, they're gonna hit $88.33 dollars here on June 28th. Then gradually plus in you know, upping like this way. And then July 1st, they're gonna hit $19.292. But US job report once it published on July 2nd, they're gonna hit a little bit upper trend, but right after that, the market is crashed. They're gonna hit like $18.940 on July 3rd. And then price is you know falling like this way, and then July 6th, they're going to hit 88.93. So currently, as you can see, still, as I told you that before, 89.00 is a you know, resistance point price line here. But about when you look at the upper trend here, it's kind of weak trend right now. Then once we're going to move to the daily chart here, as I told you that these are kind of price you know, resistance line. So 88.33, June 28th. And here, almost a pretty cross range here, 88.00. And then the next in you know, the list line, you know, 81.17. And still, this is a key price in the bottom level, 76 and 72, like this way. And an upper resistance line here. So these are the key support line. And the upper resistance line here. So, you know, $10,000. It's kind of still like a key cycle going right here. So as you can see, still the market's kind of in a box trend right now, especially, you know, last one or two weeks is a very, very small range market right now. So, you know, since the Bitcoin volatility is quite high, so from this perspective, you know, usually Bitcoin looking for, you know, upper direction or down directions after these movements, okay? And then that, you know, signal, when you look at the weekly chart, it's much more clear because the you know, train volume here you know, BTC weekly chart here is, you know, decreasing. So they're looking for the easier directions. Upper trend or, you know, downtrend. They're looking for that directions. So to figure out which direction is more higher possibility, let's start to analyze about the fundamental stuff, okay? The first one is this one, BTC hash light, mining competitions. And then last week, difficulty updates, no change on July 1st. And the next one is gonna happen July 13th, currently plus 6.03%. Actually, once we're gonna achieve this you know, number here, they're gonna hit you know, higher hash rate than right before the you know, BTC halving, which is actually positive signal. You know. So that is why, you know, let's pay attention to this number here, okay? And the CME BTC futures here. So as usual, one month's price difference, you know, average here, July 5th, is plus $45. Last week, the number was in a plus $23.3, so which means that plus 93% is bullish. But when you look at the trading volume here, you know, it's decreasing much than last week. So it's kind of unclear that we're gonna see which direction is much more clear. 
BTC futures market in the CME. Okay. All right, the next one is a BTC dominant slate and all market cap. Market cap is plus 0.7% since last Monday. And the BTC is minus 0.63%. So this means not a lot of new money coming into this market. Okay. But instead, you know, money from the BTC is so going to the altcoin right now. That is why the dominant slate is a little bit going down. The things we have to very carefully pay attention to here because, you know, once too much money goes to the altcoin, BTC plus is crashed, then altcoin markets also crash. That's typically happened in, in the cryptocurrency you know, market. So that is why it's, we need to literally pay attention like, you know, too much you know, altcoin money flow from BTC is not so healthy for this market. All the time we are looking for the new money coming from, you know, through the BTC to the altcoin. Okay, that's the key. And the USDT price. So a little bit newly issued plus 1% and then USDT plus itself is hovering under $1. Now, as you can see here, it's a little weak trend about capital injections from, you know, fiat money, USDT to, you know, BTC right now. Okay. That's we can, you know, allow from it. This kind of like money injections from like, you know, existing financial market, like stock or bond or, you know, fiat currency market to the cryptocurrency market through the Bitcoin is all the time critical elements. We're gonna see the upper trend on this market, okay? And the Google search trend. BTC is a plus one, and the gold is a plus four, relatively strong, and the USD also plus five. And uh, you know, this is kind of you know, good sign for us to understand about the current you know, existing money market conditions. So for example, like, when you look at the gold here, as you can see, it's bullish. Gold spot price right now is $17.73, still bullish after the corner shock here, All right? So, you know, which means that relatively, you know, a lot of investors thinking about, you know, safe heavy investment, last result investment, it's kind of crucial for them to save their money, okay? And the same trend, they also we can confirm on the bond market too. This is a US Treasury 10 year real yield curve. And the last week, they're gonna hit minus 65% here, here. Still, it's you know minus 0.69% this week. As you can see here, it's pretty bullish. So still we cannot, a little bit difficult to confirm a strong upper trend in the stock market, which means kind of a little bit negative effects on the BTC market because most of the retail investor consider you know, Bitcoin and the old altcoin project is a risk asset. That is why, okay? So it's a little bit bearish trend that we can confirm here, okay? The next one, S&P. Since like, you know, it's a positive reaction by the job report, you know, on July 2nd, like this way. And then last week itself is a relatively recovery moment here. But you know, since, you know, this number of change is a little bit smaller than as usual. So the reason is this one, still under pressure by the second spike of the COVID-19 that we can see here, okay? Same thing that happened in NASDAQ too. So NASDAQ is actually already recovered from highest price at the moment, you know, right before the COVID-19, price was actually 97 to 18. So current price is over 10,000, which is really good. Also, when you look at the here, so the positive reaction by Joe Report, but still, I think you know, I feel kind of a little bit you know, under pressure by the second spike of the COVID-19, okay? And then when you look at the CBOE VIX, as you can see here, that you know, since, you know, stock price, it's relatively like stable growth, you know, last week. So it's kind of mild downtrend, okay? And then thinking about the, uh, this week movement, you know, we are actually experiencing important events. So, you know, from July 6th to July 12th, important events in this one. The, this week, US government will publish the initial jobless claims. This is another good indicator for us to analyze, you know, real market conditions, you know, which is better than before or not. So let's pay attention to this one. It's on July 9th. This was kind of key news last week. So, you know, US job report added 4.8 million on June, you know, new job. And then our employment rate, you know, fell to 11.1%. But still, we were experiencing the second spike of the COVID-19. So relatively, you know, not that quite strong reactions by a stock or bond market. Still, people you know, pay attention to the gold and the bond market to save their assets, okay? 
Thank you, news number one, July 6th. So as usual, it's COVID-19 latest stats. Total infection number is plus 12.8%, little bit improved. The same as death rate too, plus 6.5%. Okay, so a little bit improved than last week. All right, key news number two. So rapper Ken West announced his US presidential bid on Twitter. And it's kind of very brave actions, you know, by him, I admire because, you know, it's kind of a little bit unrealistic idea to win the you know, US president election this year because it's a little bit too late for the, from the timing perspective. But since you know, he's gonna try presidential campaign this year, people pay a lot of attention for what the human discrimination issue on a US society. So I think you know, I admire his actions. He's a very brave, responsible person. And the next news. So the thousands of people flocked to the birds, pubs, and restaurants in England as lockdown rules eased. So this is actually the actual, you know, the video from the BBC. And I hear that thousands of people on the street and they're drinking an alcohol stuff here. I fully understand their mind because, you know, they were in a lockdown over like one or two months or so. So they were really, really tired of it. So they want to you know, experience more like an open social activity outside. But uh, we have to seriously pay attention to the second spike with this kind of environment stuff, okay? Oh, next news. Serious things are happening about Ardentin right now. So eventually, one Ardentin peso sharply down to one satoshi because of the financial crisis. A lot of like you know people are there, strong pay attention to Bitcoin, which is quite positive news, all right? Because you know a lot of people see the value of the Bitcoin itself, and the current global economy especially we are facing about the serious problem of financial crisis that especially you know in a developing economy then you know eventually you know Argentina facing a serious problem right now so it's kind of very positive news for the bitcoin market okay same things happen in a Lebanon too one Lebanese lira is now down to one status too because the Lebanon government also facing their serious financial crisis okay but my, you know, expectation of what's going to happen from this, you know, financial crisis between Argentina or Lebanese is, you know, going to this one. This is, you know, as usual, we are expecting this formula will be, you know, built in the next 20 or 30 years. So a lot of retail investors realize that it actually the crypto economy has much more huge potential than U.S. economy. We're going to experience this, you know, second U.S. dollar crisis after Nixon shock 1972. And then this event is historically very, very necessary for us to achieve this goal, okay? And Argentine or Lebanese, those kind of financial crisis is directly related to these topics too, because currently most of those developed countries, governments, central banking staff hold a lot of US dollar on their central banking accounts. So once they're gonna decrease these rions from US dollar to the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin price will skyrocket right this way. I think it's pretty sure that that's gonna happen in the next five or 10 years. So let's pay attention to it, okay? And from here, it's our coin. And the first one, Ethereum. And as usual, this is a growth stat summary of the Ethereum and the other two major growth projects, Tron and EOS. And as you can see here, that you know, a lot of progress, you know, Ethereum and Tron, active user number is pretty much gross here. And then, Transaction number here also pretty much grows. And then when you look at the, you know, Tron, it's stable growth happening here too. And it yields the same thing still, okay? The pretty good progress since last week. And then this is the news about the Ethereum. So Ethereum 2.0, it's currently, you know, their you know, developer community is so seriously developing right now. And then, you know, Ethereum platform itself is switching from proof of work based, you know, consensus algorithm to proof of stake based model. And then they will be launched on this November according to the dev community. It's a little bit behind the schedule, but you know, let's wait and see. I think they will achieve this goal, okay? Update about the Tron, TRX. So Tron also updated their pro home, and the Tron 4.0 will be launched at July 7th, 1 p.m. UTC. And then they're gonna organize some kind of, you know, events here. So maybe, you know, Tron price itself is, you know, a little bit surged like this way. Let's see it, okay? And the next one, BFT, Brave Browser. Now about Brave Browser, you know, regular stats item here, 
total registrar's publisher and a BAT unique holder here. And the publisher relatively small change like this. And the BAT holder is actually minus. I think all the, you know, this kind of, you know, kind of a little bit, you know, slower on the negative updates because of the, uh, the Braver browser, the full product of the Brave browser. And uh, I also, you know, summarize my idea that the Braver browser is actually a pretty bad idea to develop the ecosystem in a blockchain space, just like, you know, Bitcoin SV by, you know, Craig Wright. So please check out my other video about those kind of topics you are interested in. I think, you know, this number will be, you know, recovered pretty soon. Okay. And then I'm still a big fan of the Brave Browser because you know, this is a very polished web browsing software, also a very you know, advanced RX project with a privacy control staff. They will be kind of very, you know, only player can compete with Google, Facebook, any other like a dominant, you know, other platform player, you know, internet space. So I'm still you know, a big fan of the Brave Browser, okay? Next one, Chainlink. So the cover, now connected with the chain link for NFT generation and distributions for game developer. This is kind of new trial, but I think you know, I see the very high potential you know, feature here too, because currently chain link working on about the dynamic NFT model, and which means that even in a gaming space, when you play some kind of very interesting blockchain gaming stuff, and then also you're gonna play another like an interesting blockchain gaming stuff too, you gotta to exchange, or sometimes like integrate zone NFT token together, and in that sense, like it actually, you know, Chainlink play a very critical role to share all the type of, you know, related data crowd computing space into the blockchain space through the Chainlink network. And then you can, you know, develop more like a sophisticated and more exciting NFT token economy here with, you know, game, you know, character or item stuff. So you know, this actually would be a kind of future big bet for the, you know, huge development of the Chainlink ecosystem stuff. So this is great. Okay. And the next one is Comp. So, lending market update. So, July 6th, its total value locked up is 1.36 billion. So, it's a plus 9.6% you know, since last Monday here. Okay? And so, you know, market is up a trend right now. It's pretty good. And then compounds the number player here, and their market dominance rate is 46.90%. Okay? Next one is Xerox Protocol, ZRX. And these are the number about traditional exchange top 10 and a DEX top 10 project here. Trading volume difference you know, this week is 34 to 1. Last week is a 36 you know, to 1, so a little bit you know, shrinking. It's a good trend. I like that. And the next one. So this is a key news update for the Xerox protocol. So the matcher, they are integrated like you know, their vertical you know, DEX exchange applications on top of the Xerox network is now open to everyone right now. And I also, you know, check the UI, and I think it's a pretty well developed one too. We're gonna see a lot of business updates or progress would happen in a Matcha Pro Home, so let's see it, okay? And the Kaiba Network, can you see for next? So Kaiba Network's also doing a lot of like new things right now. So the Kaiba DAO, it's based on like, you know, Ethereum, like, you know, staking model, will go live on July 7th. It's another great update from the you know, major DEX project, so it's great, okay? And the Crypto.com, CRO. Uh, they're gonna eventually achieve the historical milestone, so Crypto.com achieved 3 million user registrations. Things I want you to do here is actually this one. So their decisions to go into the US market was right. So since like, you know, they're gonna go into the US market, they're gonna hugely hit you know, user growth here, and also their market cap is rapidly growing like this way. The US market is kind of key market for the entire crypto industry that we can confirm here. So I think you know, a lot of like a blockchain project player can learn from you know, their actions on this, okay? The, because crypto.com used to be a pretty active player you know, in Asia and the European market, but they now switched their major target from those countries to the US, and then they're gonna achieve this huge hit right this way. Before that, their user registration number is around 1 million. But you know, six months later, since they're gonna get into the US market, those user registration number is hit three times. This is a great success. So I think so they're gonna take the completely right way to scale up their business, okay? And a dent. Okay, great news on the dent. So the finally, you can buy dent voice and a mobile data pack through your PayPal accounts. 
I already purchased, you know, their, their, their voice and mobile data packets through my PayPal accounts. Now then develop you know, free integrated vertical products on the applications. You know, you can purchase any kind of like you know, mobile data package, including you know, data, dent mobile data pack itself. Also, you know, you can use your voice call on the dent services still on eSIM basis. I think it's also like great timing for them to get in the US market as crypto.com did in a successful way. They can get more business tractions, market and adaptations and market recognitions in the US you know, user base, which is, you know, time to be a great benefits for them as exactly happened in crypto.com. So I highly recommend to, you know, then teams going to the US market. Okay. All right. Next one is NKN. NKN has also updated their platform. So NKN 2.0 achieves 20,000 full blockchain node. It's that, this is actually kind of amazing number with more than 40 countries. They are accurately developing their decentralized CDN platform ecosystem stuff step by step. This number is great. Okay. And Ogre Rep. Ogre Retail. They're going to actually release target on July 28th is ongoing. I think they will achieve this target. It's a great project. Okay. So this is the last slide as usual. All the time in HODL, it's the best for retail investor to minimize the risk and the mass amount of return. Because, you know, investing in crypto assets, including Bitcoin, is just like, you know, investing in early stage startups. So when you look at the legendary angel investor attractions, such as Peter Thiel, Red Hoffman, Ron Coway, they're going to use to invest in the very early days of the Google and Facebook. All the time, they're going to take you know, one simple approach is long term hold. And then this is another evidence from the Binance research. All the time, like the longest holder in the crypto assets maximize their return over 200%. So I'm also a long term investor on the crypto asset space of Shira Arcoin. So I highly recommend you guys to also take the long term investment approach on the crypto asset space. Okay. So that is all this time. I also make a lot of interesting videos about the crypto and the blockchain space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye.